I'm now going to show you the process of disconnecting a car. It's really the same, but I'm just going to add um, what we do when there's freezing rain, fro heavy frost, cold weather, snow, something that would cause my caps to want to freeze up. So, car's all done. Or let's put it this way, we're done with the liquid. We proved that the liquid is done. We come, and when it comes to turning these things off or on, it's, you should not have to crank. These Regos are really good. Generally speaking, Regos are good. They move easy, they close easy. The Midlands are the ones we have the most trouble with. They, they are the ones that are just, can be your most difficult valves. But anyway, when you're shutting off, that's it. You take it down to where it seats, and then you snug it. That's it. No more. Until you, until you have proof that it's still leaking. That's all we want. That's all we want to do initially is to start. And when things are pressured up, I always use the spanner wrench to break my acmes loose. So we go and we shut this off. Take your acme. And if it's really pressured up, you can pop the hose like that. It'll drain a little faster. Now that it's done, we listen for just a second to see if you still hear it hiss. If you still hear it hiss, because remember, well, this is still connected. This valve is still on. So if that thing were to be leaking, we would hear it hiss out here. And if you heard it hissing, at this point, is the safest point to deal with that because nothing is exposed you can hear it and if there really was a, a fair amount of liquid it would be dripping down on top of the car here not spraying on us so now's the time if that was still leaking you tighten this down again until it quits but if you only need 20 to 40 foot pounds of torque on this to close it don't use 60 or 100 it's the proper application of force is all that we're after. It's to do the job and to do it safely. And if I can do it with a minimal amount of force, great. But if I get to the point that you consistently have to use a great deal of force to do something, that's an indicator that things are getting so worn out, it's time for a change and improvement somewhere. So let's say that even with this light rain, let's say it was, you know, like 30 degrees out, you know, and everything's starting to freeze, and I want to protect my stuff from the freeze. What you do then, take this over to here, take your used oil, you go back here to your nut, and you got that shoulder. Well, we put some oil down here on that shoulder, spin that, get that lubrication in there. That's going to help allow you to hand tighten things. And then you put a bead of oil on that. It will not 100% prevent this from icing over, but it will give you a fighting chance come the next day that you'll be able to take this off even by hand. Even if you have some difficulty, it'll let you take that off by hand. So. Now that that's done, we'll go and we'll hang this hose up. Do the same thing here. Put a little bit of oil on that. Spin that. Put some oil here. Always oil up your male threads, not the female ones. And then these, we just get them, keep them loose. The whole purpose of this is to keep the stuff, the wind from swirling snow and sleet around up underneath that uh, weather cover on the front of the box and getting stuff up inside here. Now, 
that off. There. Because we did not crank it in, we don't have to crank it out. So you just did your future self a favor by only putting in it in, threading it in as tight as it needed to be and no more. Now that you pulled that stinger, you set it up. Don't put it away yet. We want to seal this up. We do things in a certain order so that we try not to forget because we don't want to ship this car with either that plug not put in or only put in hand tight. So it's just a routine that's established here. Don't put that stinger away till that's done. Same thing. We take it, we use some oil, hand tight now like I said earlier one of the things the FRA has, has a kick has a campaign against our plugs being rounded out and plugs being put in too tight well we need to get it in there tight enough to do its job but it doesn't have to be in there ridiculously tight see now I'm getting tight now that thing's getting tight that's it no more there's no need And you can tell here I only got just a little over two full threads. If you ever put a plug in and it bottoms out to where you got one thread or less, you have to document that. You have to take a picture of it and you have to forward that information up so that they can get that. Because we're not allowed to replace the plugs. We're not allowed to replace this threaded flange. If we were, it'd be an easy fix. Take nothing to fix that. We're not allowed to. All we can do is document it, and that's how we protect ourselves. They'll either decide to OTMA that to a shop, or they'll decide to get a mobile repair unit on site, or they're going to notify whoever it is that is going to fix it. So protect yourself. Protect yourself where you stand and use tools so you don't fall, slip, damage any part of your body. Protect yourself against a potential legal problem by documenting things. Now we're going to put this away. Now same thing, we're going to shut this. Well same thing, you tighten that off uh, just enough. And because I showed you how to oil up stuff, and because I don't need to oil it, it's not that cold now. I'm just going to put everything back. And then this, you don't draw this up tight. You, you draw it to where there's a couple threads showing so it's loose. All we want it to do is keep the worst of the elements out. No more. And because we're not here to fight this hose, we're here to move this hose. So now we're going to take this hose. I'm going to put it right back down and then we're going to lower it down so that it doesn't interfere with the other hose. When that vapor is on this end, life's a lot easier. But I didn't want to show you a car that was easy. Anybody can show you, it's like this weather. We could have postponed doing this, but you will never postpone offloading a rail car because it's kind of rainy. If you're the kind of person that does that, you're in the wrong field, and we both know that's not you. So, I wanted to pick a car like this. And always, just be aware, I backed up like three small steps. That's a long way to back up. And as a rule, if I wasn't talking in front of a camera, I wouldn't even do that. It's one of those things, I'm out of my routine. I make little mental mistakes like that. So now we're going to transfer this over. <clears throat> we're going to carry it. See that? Side shuffle. Side step. Side step. 
because I always want to maintain my center because I'm kind of holding this out here. Anytime you hold lift anything like this, you, you run the risk of across your shoulders and down your back of, of causing some sort of damage. So always do that, sidestep, drop it. We're not here to you know drag our feet or turn sideways and try to move things. I generally make more trips returning parts than I do bringing parts out simply because I have a mental reason why I do it. And this here is loose. So when you stand it up, it'll stand up. We, we just get everything. If it, if it wants to lean, you can cock it a little bit. And then you see this? This male connector is always pointing in. I don't care, rain, snow, whatever gets on these two, it does not stop this valve from working and it won't last anyway. But you point that in there to minimize the possibility of water getting inside there so when you go connect your nitrogen, you, you're, you're very confident and then when you connect the nitrogen, everything will work like it's supposed to. And again, before we disconnected that, you listen. Now granted, this thing would have to leak pretty bad because we probably pulled it down to somewhere between five and 15 pounds of pressure. So again, your risk is, is minimized so that just normal gloves work just fine. Here we are for that. Again, not going to put it away yet. When it comes to taking a final car pressure reading, I take that lower pressure gauge that's sitting there in the toolbox and you'll put it in here and then you'll open this up and then that pressure gauge is what'll tell you and that's what that's the pressure that you document as far as what your finished car pressure was. We don't rely just on what the pressure gauge is at the compressor say and we don't rely what that big pressure gauge up at the actuator says. We rely on that. So when you're done, pull your gauge out tighten this by hand don't do what the last guy did and use a wrench you put this in same thing uh, I don't as a rule I don't even oil it up because what the heck it's a quarter inch pipe plug you know and so and these things sometimes are just so chewed up you can barely get a grip on them and that's it no more no more there's nothing to be gained to just crank and crank and crank on that just because you can. So, I'm going to put this away. Same thing, I'm going to take this male end and I'm going to put it right up into that corner to protect it. And everybody stays. <laughs> Off and well, where it is, there it is. Another thing, you're disconnecting your liquids. If you are getting liquid out of here, when you said the car is empty, that car may not be completely empty. So, in 
<clears throat> depends on where you're at. It may be too late to do anything about it, but just one of the many things you try to always pay attention to. And because this lid is laying this way and it's blocking my access to the hose, we're just going to plug it, set it down. We'll deal with that later. This way. And because I'm blocked, my path is kind of blocked, we're just going to hang it there. I'm done with that, we'll move this over here. Same thing, we're still listening to make sure nothing is running out to that liquid valve. Pull that. Put that there. And this one here, you snug it up. Because we're going to use that for leverage to put the next put it in the next time. And the same thing as before, because we did not crank this in, we do not have to crank it out. Then we can take this, prop it up in there. And that is going to make it easier to grab when we're over there. And tight. And then we just take this down. Oh, now it's getting tight. That's it. That's plenty tight. I have no need to crank it down beyond that. So now I'm gonna walk around and we're gonna slowly start putting everything away. kind of keep these straight for now just going to move it out of our way make it where we're not going to be a trip hazard now I take my seal this is your last chance to double check. And I want to make sure I didn't leave any tools. Uh, you can just give that a quick snug with your hands. Prove it. If everything looks good, probably good. So now what we do. Now we need to get this pan out. And this is the one that gave us trouble. Odds are it's going to give us trouble going in because it gave us trouble going out, but let's see. Woo! -hoo! It worked. We are not required by any code that I'm aware of that we have to seal an empty residue car. We seal it to protect ourselves because these things, this dog ear, that dog ear, you'll find two or three a year come in and the dog ears are broken off. We want to protect ourselves against this pin vibrating out and this lid flipping open. It happens. It happened on one of the cars I had sealed. I was using plastic seals at the time and somehow that plastic seal got broken and this thing was sitting in Rainier, Minnesota, a, a car was, and somewhere between my place and Rainier, Minnesota, that seal broke, pin worked its way out, 
and the lid flipped up and an FRA inspector was there in that yard anyway, saw it and tried to nail me with a very serious fine. Well, because I documented all my stuff, I forwarded to him in an email all my documentation that I had in fact sealed it and he dropped the case. It became a nothing issue. So we're going to take our seal. Ideally, you want to seal it through the dog ear. There's usually a hole here or try to seal it through here, but this is only a 12 inch seal and it's not easy. So usually take a chain, feed it through. Just one loop is generally fine. That's it. Doesn't have to be super tight because if it's super tight, it makes it very difficult for the guy at the refinery to um, chip. Left my phone down there. Anyway, this is just an example. Normally what I do is I'm done. I take a picture of the seal, take a picture of the car number, and then I go and I document it. So in my rail car calculation sheet, the first half of my calculation sheet is proving that the car is safe to offload and getting the readings. The second half of my calculation sheet is saying this car is, has been documented safe to release. And so that's where I record my finished car pressure and I, I record my seal. Also, what we do extra is because we also got a fine once because we were using, again, a plastic seal. Uh, we ended up getting fined by Canadian National Rail and that ended up costing us a few thousand dollars because of a, essentially a, a plastic seal and a problem with it. So we also will take this seal number and I will take the picture that I would normally take with my phone and I would download that picture into a folder on my computer and that way I have documentation and not only do I have that seal number but I got a picture of it going through the chain or going through the pin. All I got left to do now is put away that liquid hose and close my chain. As far as I'm concerned at this point, that's all I really want to touch on right now. So thank you.